Um, so, welcome everybody to this WebEx. Um, I'm just going to briefly say what the purpose of this WebEx is, and then I'm going to go through some WebEx etiquette as well. <coughs> First time people are annoying just to, to see what WebEx means. So, today um, is primarily looking at fundal height measurement and, fun, and fetal growth. And this is a project study. So normally project studies are people coming along and talking about their work and they can share the learning and talk about what's went well and perhaps where it's going to be even better. But as this is some type of new measure for our programme, but I'm understanding this is some work going on in the community, I thought it'd be quite helpful if we have it as an all round project study and we talk about some of the subject stuff and how quality improvement can help deliver that locally and nationally as well. So that's the plan for the next hour. Um, so, as always, we very and kind of key etiquette. Um, if you've got any technical issues, we have Kirsty on the line from the McClick team. She is a knowledgeable people on how to do with WebExes. So, if there's any problems at all, please don't hesitate to put your name in the chat box. Can I just do a quick check in that people are comfortable with the kind of layout and how to use chat box, and if not, just say me. Sorry, what was that? Are you quite comfortable using um, WebEx? So oh, yeah. if you wanted to ask, yeah. So I was all right doing that. That's fantastic. Um, so through the presentation, I'm, I've got just a very quick few slides to go through. I'll put this one in mute for Kirsty Will, and then what we'll do is we'll open it up and we'll have a kind of open conversation on um, some of the topics we're talking about. <laughs> and that's basically that for us. So let me just get started. Are we see that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So fundal height yeah. measurement. Um, yeah. First of all, welcome. So I will apologise. I put a Scottish map on here, which was very quite ignorant of me. I think I've lost my English and Welsh friends at the bottom. <laughs> so I always like to figure out where people have came from. So what you can see at the left hand side, hopefully, is some arrows. And you can click on the third one down the arrow pointer and perhaps shows where you are. That would be helpful for a generic introduction. So I'm going to start. Um, I'm I think I'm there, so I'm somewhere there. So if you can all do the same, third arrow down, the point to the right, click it with your left if you're on a laptop, and again, roll over the map to see where we all are. And that will give us an idea. Can I, I didn't okay. realise we actually had something visual to look at. How do I actually get into oh, that? Oh, sure. Now, the WebEx presentation that was in your diary, did you get that? Mm. Yeah, but it's Scotland. I know, I know that. I thought you might be able to drag it down. <laughs> so, if you've not got the, the email that perhaps Kirsty can send that oh, one yes. to you just now, so there's a little yeah. link. If you yeah. press that link, yeah. um, it'll come up and it'll ask you right. for your name and you'll go from there. Right. So, I appreciate there's no Welsh and English and Irish, and I'm really, really sorry for that. So, even if you just want to put an arrow pointing down where you are. Right. And how's it working Sh for people? Cheryl, no, I've done this before, but I can't see any arrows to click on. On my screen. What, no, I can't How's that now? No, no, no I don't get any I'm idea. Not seeing it either, Cheryl. It should be. That's Cheryl. Oh, I'm just, just managed to work it out. <laughs> <laughs> so, actually, it's probably my fault because I've not pressed all. Oh, I've moved myself. I'm moving some other. Oh, we've got to be on full screen. You have to visualise the screen, yeah. So. People are getting it, so it is access open, so it's just left arrow. Down. Oh, I've got it. Yes. Yay, here we go. We're starting to get some Yeah, found it. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm, I'm moving out to sea. This is a test of change for me to see if I can use technology. It's not that you guys are about me. <laughs> well, I've disconnected, so I have to wait and reconnect. <laughs> No, I can't see any arrows at all. I don't know. You have to go into the... Oh, I've done it. Don't ask me what I did, though. Oh, Geraldine's just moved up to some one of the islands, I think. <laughs> oh, I don't, I, I'm trying to put it back down into the... That's true. It's <laughs> the smaller screen. Obviously, it's, oh, there we go. There's, there's Jane now. Yeah. 
So that's the thing that is fun because I realised in yesterday we had more people joining, as I say. So why am I head if I scotch my phone? I never know. But I just thought it would be something for us to demonstrate the kind of breadth of this programme and who we impact and who we reach. And just as a general welcome, that um, we are across the country, but it's great that we can all join this one forum and can I have a conversation. Cheryl, I'm really sorry, it's Jill here. Where, where did you find your arrows about? So what are you looking at just now, Jill? I've got a picture of Scotland, an app of Scotland with lots of names on it apart from mine. Okay, so can you see a line down the left-hand side that's got like a pen and it's got a no. page and an arrow? It could be that you're... Um, it's the one that says working. annotation, yeah. Cheryl. Yeah. It's the one that says annotation and you click on it and, you, uh, and it's got sorry, an arrow. On mine. Do you see that, Jill? No, I don't seem to have that. Oh. Well, don't worry. Oh, well, I know where you are. You're Jill is in the bed area at the bottom right-hand side of the screen. <laughs> Thank you. And by the looks of it, Claire's flying over to America somewhere. <laughs> um, she's getting left and left every time I see her. <laughs> so, that was just, I'm going to move on. It's a very brief welcome to everybody and look where we are across it. And just fantastic that we can all come together on this one forum. So, thank you very much for doing that. And Jill, I'll get better at that. We'll get better over time at that. <laughs> so, those of you who know the programme, just very briefly, um, will know that the, the programme's changing into the fact that we're looking at core and supplementary priorities. So, a very quick run through of what that means for the maternity programme. So, in this familiar programme, we'll know that we went from 48 outcomes down to 10. And for maternity, that's looking at neonatal mortality rate. And that's a collaborative working with the needs of neonatal care programme on the preterm perinatal wellbeing package. I always need to remember my words when I say that, it comes out all wrong. And we will still be looking at still birth rate, but specifically fetal movement, fetal growth in CTG, and yeah, we're going at CPH continuing on that. And that's about the fourth stage approach that hopefully they're all familiar with by now, and some of the process bundles. And the development of the national news, which is coming on leaps and bounds, and we will hopefully have some progress updates on that by next month. Um, so that, that's our programme, that's what we're going to kind of hone down and focus on. And today what we're going to be talking about is fetal growth. <coughs> now, we are this is a, a new process measure for the programme, so what that essentially means is we don't have established measures as yet. We're still working up in the background with a core focus group. What does that mean for the CLIC? How could we impact and influence an improvement programme that's meaningful and will help us reduce the stillbirth rate in Scotland? So, opening it up to everybody, I want to kind of have a real chat about the subject of fundal height measurement. Get to know what you do at both and how we bring in quality improvement then to help start the process off, if you perhaps do it, or if you're a bit down the line, how we could use some tools and processes to to help with that, and I've got some suggestions on a slide, but I've spoken up, so over to you guys. <coughs> Who, I suppose the first question is, fundal height measurement, do we do it? Do we practice is it a routine practice or a bit fragmented? It, it, is, it is routine practice for us in an iron household that um, fundal height measurement is done. And uh, the women have a customised growth chart for that. Fantastic. So, think about quality improvement practitioners. If you're saying, and this is going to be a bit of a devil advocate here, you're saying it's embedding practice. How do you know it's embedding practice? What, what's your evidence to tell you that? I've been cheeky with that question. I know. Yeah, I'm just thinking, well, it would be, you know, if we audit, or, but. Um, <laughs> And also, um, you know, we are meant to put in the the weight in the gap grow program when the babies are born. However, we're not doing that as successfully as we should. Okay. So you know areas that are going well and perhaps areas that require improvement as well. Yeah. But I think most of them require improvement at the moment. Yeah. So in Betsy, we're the third highest in the country for referral and detection of small for gestational age babies. So we know that we're doing really well with our uh, growth charts. So can, would it be helpful in this kind of form? It's all about shared learning. Is there any particular practices or improvement yeah. that you've yeah. perhaps done that you could share in this yeah. form? Yeah. yeah. Um, 
I originally um, was the community matron and I um, introduced GAP across the three sites that we have for Betsy over 2014-15 and there was lots and lots of errors as we went through, we um, sent tra trainers down to um, Perinatal Institute and then they came back and trained their teams and we had doctors also trained. Um, but over the next few years, the errors didn't go down and the stillbirth rate didn't go down. So I um, went off for a period with spinal injuries and I came back and they put me into a new role as um, improvement midwife and I was given free reign to spend as much time as I needed to improve our GROW program and our um, you know, referral and detection rates and error rates. And so in the last year, I have reduced our error rates down from about 40 a month to one to two. Um, we have, as I say, we're the, the third highest in the UK for a, a re referral and detection. I go out, I done, I present everywhere to, at every multidisciplinary meeting. I go out and I spend, um, I've, I've covered all the community midwives across the three sites and done teaching package um, on GROW and how we're doing um, and how well we're getting on. And then I've updated the um, policy so that has now gone out and I've done that face to face with all the staff. I do drop ins um, on the units and I have just had my ab abstract um, accepted for the Embrace meeting in June. Um, I've done pop up boat banners um, in both English and Welsh for external for the <laughs> women to remind the midwives about the GROW programme and also for the staff to um, learn from the key messages in their, when they're doing the mandatory training. Um, I've come up with a database for all the different errors and I'm, I'm also obviously looking at the missed SGAs um, so that we can improve those. But our referral, our detection rate for the last quarter was 51.4%, whereas the national average is 42.2%. So it's, it's basically... I, I believe it is having the time to spend with the clinicians, teaching them and going through things with them and yes. using our supervisors as massive support yes. um, for going through cases um, with a non-blame culture but just yes. learning from our mistakes and I have key messages going out everywhere and I've just got a poster as well which is going up telling the all three units how well they are doing as well. Oh, excellent. That's a range of activity by the sound of it. And before I hand over, I want to localise this. Did that, how has that then transpired into early outcomes for stillbirth or neonatal mortality? Or we've, is that um, having an impact? Yeah, massive, massive. We've gone, we went from 40 a year um, down to 30, and the year before last was 26, and last year was 13. So we've, we've reduced dramatically our stillbirth rate, and I've got a new. Um, Excel spreadsheet for stillbirths and that brings up all the information that we need as well. So we are making massive inroads into our stillbirth rates. Oh, that's fantastic. Has anybody yeah. got any other questions? Like, mm -hmm. Questions? Anything, anything at all? Um, it's Angela here. Can I just say that's absolutely amazing, fantastic um, yeah. piece of work. Uh, absolutely yeah. in, inspired by that. Yeah. Can I just ask how, so um, I'm not working in a health board um, any longer, but the health board I worked in, we did use the gap and the ongoing teaching and education. How does yeah. that go down with the staff, the multidisciplinary team, Fine. when you started that? Because I know in Scotland not every area uses that teaching methodology for the staff. Yeah, no, we, we, we've already started the prompt, so we're doing multidisciplinary training anyway. Um, mm -hmm. I send, I, one of our biggest problems was obviously changing over of staff. So um, we've had agreed that all of our doctors that come in on a yearly basis um, go to the Perinatal Institute for training for GROW. We've made it a very high priority, and we do an awful lot of things multidisciplinary now. So. We don't have a problem with that, and we have lots of forums 
um, I visit and I will present there to anybody who will listen to me, basically. Um, we work together, you know, so no, um, we had to resolve the problem where we did have quite a lot of um, medical staff who really weren't up to scratch. So the answer for that was everybody goes through the training in the, from, from the Perinatal Institute. Um, Cheryl, it's Angela. Um, I think that is an absolutely fantastic example of a system that knew what their data was telling them. They had yeah. the data, yeah. interrogated the data, and they yeah. knew yeah. what their data was telling them, and then set out to do something about it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a fantastic piece of work. The pop-up well pop posters are very much um, in the ilk of the Safer Pregnancy campaign, so they look like that. But there's, there's one for the clinicians with the key messages for them, and there's one for the women to remind the midwives when they go to the clinic. So they're, they're new, and I'm very, very pleased with those. And also posters to tell the staff how well they are doing. And it's engaging them and supporting them yeah. and spending time with them. I've had the luxury of the time. That's what's done it. It's, it's um, clear here. I'd, I'd see again. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name at the beginning because I came Jan on a bit Hornby. late. Pardon? Jan, Janet Jan. Formby. Yeah, yeah, I, well, I say it's fantastic work, and I, and yeah. I also think it's very, very forward thinking that they've, they've, they've released the capacity for you to be able to do this yeah. on a yeah. whole system approach, and that mm. rather than just being one small area, which is what we start with, yeah. that it's, well, it's got link, all three sites. Yeah, it's linking is, it in with other disciplines, well, yeah. uh, other other um, multi-professional, and also uh, you know uh, across. Across the sites as well, which yeah. is, is yeah. Um, yeah, with fantastic. all the different, you know. Anybody else want to make a wee comment? I've got a variety of slides, Claire. I'm just going to read out right, okay. a minute, but I just, when Angela said that about knowing your system, absolutely. So I've got a variety of improvement slides today as well. So this resonated with me completely. The building the will and the conditions for change. The understand your current system to be new improvement. And I'm wondering, and just looking at Bernie's question, did you have a plan or a specific method to do this? So did you have a name and a change theory or, or sorry, anything? Can, can you repeat that again, sorry? Yeah, so I'm probably speaking too fast. I tend to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so looking at the improvement methodology about developing aims and change theories, and then looking at Bernie's question, did you have a plan or a specific method of improvement um, to do this? No, I'm... I'm Improvement projects is probably my strongest point, and it was it was probably the, the thing that I enjoyed most in my previous role. Um, so I looked at, basically broke it right down, and went back to what the what the errors were, so that I could concentrate yep. on those and pass the key messages back, and then I could share that with everybody. And I I've I constantly audited and audited, and I've also looked at the figures on the um, Grow website, which is the the reports, because nobody had really looked at those, and that tells you a huge amount about what you're doing. Um, so I broke that down, and I spent a lot of time talking to the Perinatal Institute, who are fantastic at supporting you. And I think basically I just really listened to the staff and thought, right. This needs a lot of time, and I'd also had a very familiar relationship with all the community midwife teams, so I was able to go in and start with them, really, and then as I realised that the medical staff were a problem, I then moved on to including them as well, and slowly, slowly, we, I'm doing multidisciplinary training this next year within the units now to get the inpatient um, staff right up to standard. But to be perfectly honest, most of the errors were picked up in our out, outpatient assessment unit. So uh -huh. they were they were on the ball, really. So it's just making sure everybody else gets an update, really, now. But I think it's just the way my m mind works and how I broke it down myself, because I'd implemented it to start with. Another question from Bernie. So how do you track? or monitor the progress, Jan? Um, but by, I have an Excel spreadsheet with all the errors on, and oh. I, all, I get all the day text on, uh, uh, basically at the bottom of it was that we day text all grow errors. 
so that I get shared with those as well. So the line manager will usually have a look at them. I will have a look as well, and I look through the case notes, audit the case notes, and then I feel if there's learning, I share that with the line manager and the supervisor of midwives to support the clinician that made the error. And that's where I started with, with DATEX reporting. It, and, you know, I have a, a, obviously I can share anything with you all, um, but it, it this um, Excel spreadsheet gives you all of the documentation errors and all the growth trajectory errors, and it gives them for each site, and it gives them broken down into community midwife obstetrics and ultrasound as well. Um, and I put the missed SGAs on the bottom too, and that was my basis of learning what was actually wrong and what we were doing wrong and what we weren't getting. And then I concentrated on those when I went out to teach. Fantastic. What about others in the call? Is there anything that's triggering, oh, yeah, that sounds right, or any specific questions or what is she perhaps their journey as well? Well, I think it sounds, you know, great that um, how you can use that around and, um, you know, that's obviously been from having, you know, being able to put the time and investment yeah. in and, you know, that is really something that we would like to do. I wondered if you'd be able to share some of that, you know, um, your Excel sheet so that we, we've got a place to start, yeah, really. Absolutely, no problem at all. Yeah. I mean, if it's helpful, you can send it to me quick team and we can send it out to people on this call. Yeah. Just as a database. Everybody's happy that we do it that way. Oh, yeah. This, yeah. yeah. Yep, that'd be great. If anybody's not wanting to save the data, would you just um, send us a week in an email in or a wee private message on here? That would be helpful. Okay. Okay, so. Jack, that was really a great way to start this call because that was what we were hoping to do. This is a, a project surgery about how do we help each other with tools and techniques and overcoming barriers. So I was trying to do last night, I forgot where I am. Um, do, 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 do. Right, so I wanted to kind of bring up, we can probably drill them down a wee bit about the specifics. So as I said, the clicker kind of, we're still in a very, very early session. Where it's going to take us, we're not quite sure. But a lot of the debate that's come up is about the accuracy of some sort of fundal height measurements. So we can't go in and watch people, of course, and we wouldn't question people's judgment. But it's people finding that there's a wee bit of um, accurate plotting, there's some concerns with that, or is that not an issue? Or generally, anything with some sort of fundal height measurement, is anybody willing to share some issues or challenges they've come across? Yeah, for us, Cheryl, we've been using the grow the customised growth chart with GAP, and we've been really short staffed in one area, and it's very noticeable when you haven't got a continuity of care right. that the grow charts are very different to what they are if the same person is doing the carrying out the population. That's interesting. Anybody else find that same continuity of care? Yeah, I think that that is a common, you know, that you do note that, um, you know, different people do, you know, will palpate somebody differently. Yeah. It's difficult to get around that without continuity. Oh. Yeah, definitely. Um, if everybody is taught to do it the same way, now I'm future care we all know is really, really important. Mm -hmm. But getting that absolutely every time for every appointment is is very rarely going to happen just because midwives quite rightly are these days off and they go and leave and they get sick like everybody else in the world. So how do we how do we bridge that gap that says if you know, if I go to see Cheryl's women at her clinic today because Cheryl's in holiday. Why am I not measuring it the same way as Cheryl? Why is it making a difference? I think that's one of the questions we've got to ask ourselves. And equally, is there any examples within the continuity where a midwife is measuring small all of the time? And I'm just putting it out there to ask the question. Mm, good question. I'm not sure. I don't have an answer for that at the moment, but I do 
when I'm doing um, a missed SGA audit, I always look at how many community midwives have been um, measuring the cyst bundle height. And I think any more than two is not good continuity. Um, but all we've been able to do is train them the way the perinatal institute train them and also make sure that they've all got a set of, a set of where issued by the Perinatal Institute to make sure their plots are accurate and um, we do often see big variations in plots but you still have to act on on, on Can the... Can somebody mute their line? There's somebody breathing quite heavy into the phone, sorry. Oh, that's it again. Stop breathing. <laughs> yeah. Stop, really stop breathing. Sorry, I interrupted you, Dan. Oh, there it is. me. This WebEx, so I, I, I'd need an email to send this to everybody. Have we got your email, Jan? It's Janet.Quarmby, which is Q U A R M B Y, at wales.nhs.uk. If you could email me, I'll send it straight back. Oh. Kirsty, did you get that? Yep, I did. Fabulous. Thank you. Awesome. So I think, Angela, that we don't know if you can say that, which is... Is it? I don't know. Yes, yeah, so we don't know the answer, although we do know that continuity of care is so important. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, else is in the call? So, does Enda not do fundal height measurement? I suppose that's a, a question. Is Enda still doing the old fashioned way of looking at the landmarks and going from there? No. Yeah. No. No. No, it's still here uh, from Borders. Is to say, um, I suppose because a lot of most of us now have badger in Scotland. When you do an abdominal palpation, um, that's one of the boxes that you have to fill in, you know, that you've done fundal height measurement and it's measured in centimetres. So that's really pulled us away from, you know, writing things down like uh, fundal height equals date right. and that sort of thing. So I think for us in the borders, we um, have been following the perinatal institute um, measurements as well. but. Certainly, from <laughs> one good thing about Badger, will I say, <laughs> um, <laughs> is that, that that we are all filling it in as in measured in centimetres. Yes, yeah. and I think probably with Best Start coming in Scotland and the Best Beginnings in England, it's called. You know, with the continuity of care, hopefully um, that should get a little bit better. We'll keep our fingers crossed about that one. Yeah, uh, but there always will be a bit of a. Um, a variance in yeah. individuals' measurements. Yes. But what we shouldn't be doing is um, when women are referred in by community midwives, we should not be re-measuring. Um, and I find that happens every now and again. Well, somebody's, that's know. a really good point, actually. And something that the group brought up, this core focus group we've got nationally, is round about um, Fundal height measurement is scheduled antenatal appointments and making sure there's a two to three week gap between them. Yeah. Um, and I'm I'm wondering if that's a problematic part of an improvement. Maybe you'd be looking at nationally, has it been done too much? And I'd be keen to hear other people's thoughts on that if we find that specific to the board that measurement's been done. Say for instance, a lady changed triage and then the next week she's got an antenatal appointment and the next week she's back in triage for whatever reason. Is she been seen and been measured every week? Yeah, that, I mean, we get it occasionally where there, there's only been a week, and I will always, I always feed back to every clinician that has done something not within the policy, because we have to all do the same thing. What's other people's thoughts on that? Whatever else we're talking about. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that that is happening with us. You know, I do feel that. They are measuring it as they should, not, you know, on a weekly basis. Um, I haven't found any evidence to say that we, you know, that we're doing that. So, I, I think we aren't either up in Highland, but I think as 
working as a community midwife myself as well as team leading, I think on chatting to the midwives they find it quite challenging when people are coming in maybe weekly for appointments. Um, you know, they do want to carry out a full check, so it can be quite challenging. I think that's what we that personally that's what I find it can be quite challenging for them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to get back a couple of points. Done that one. Done that one. So, as an improvement organisation, we always like to bring improvement in. So, I'm hearing a lot of really, really good stuff, but a lot of challenges with perhaps those areas for improvement. And thinking about skills for improvement, we have the, the improvement guide. It's our Bible about how we support change with data and development of change. So, I'd start that there for people to look at. But have you heard? This is probably a bit about the human factor of change. Have you heard of Everett Rogers, anybody? He he's the founder of that concept of kind of early adopters. He was the first to say that, and you can see his um, cycle at the side. And he talks about if you get an idea, don't make it complex. Do something that's going to spread naturally. So we're talking about fundal height, something that's going to give an advantage. It's easy, it's simple. You can trial it and you can observe it. So that's the kind of foundations I try and stick with any changes I'm doing. So for yourselves at board level, if census fundal height measurement and the measures round about that was something you were looking to improve, I would absolutely be having these five key concepts at the back of your head and thinking about what's the advantage. So the advantage for the room, advantage for the, the clinician doing it. Is it compatible with the evidence? Is it compatible with practice? How simple is it to follow? There's nothing worse than a change concept that's four pages long. Easy, simple, but something that you can trial, but it's not permanent into practice, that you can test it and go, this isn't working. And I suppose maybe since this fundal height is probably not a great example, because you either do it or you don't. But I've heard kind of lots of challenges around about simple things as measuring tape. Is that a challenge in community <coughs> Are people using their own? Are people using single tapes and having to reuse. I'm beginning to hear people's thoughts and what they're doing at board level on that. I've heard different stories. I think, Sharon, most people are using disposable tapes now from a health and safety point of view, that we're not we're not encouraged we're encouraged not to be using Taking our own tape along and, and reusing it. So yeah, we've never done that. I just ever use now the paper disposable tapes that are once only. Mm. Yeah, definitely. So I'm going to then ask the same question that I would ask again. Do we know that everybody's doing that, Claire? We know that's what we should be doing, but in our system, do we know that that's what they are doing? Yeah, we do without a doubt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah comment for other community areas, but I, 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 the comment earlier on was, yes, it's embedded in practice, but no, we don't have the data to, to prove it because it's not something that's been collected. But from health and safety infection audits and from, um, I, I would think that would be something that would come up, but I, I, I'm I, not aware of the data to, to see it, but I would expect that. I would say, Claire, for Lanarkshire, definitely we're using 100% oh. paper tapes. <laughs> yeah, easily for easily yeah. for here, but yeah. I can't comment on other areas. Oh, no, no, very, no. I'd be, yeah. Very, yeah. I'd be very surprised if other areas weren't doing it. And yeah. I'd, uh, mm. I'm not I'm so, Claire, I'm not saying it's not the policy. I'm just saying it, it's like everything. Do we know that everybody is doing everything no, I don't, we I, do I, I all the time? And we that's don't. always the question we've got to, we've got to ask. I agree. I said we don't have the data yeah. on it, but um, yeah. I, I, I would be, I would have been surprised. That's all. Yeah. So each system needs to know that they've got that right as a starting point mm -hmm. for moving forward. And equally back to the point that was made earlier about you know if women are having extra visits, that the midwife wants to do her full check, whereas in actually that that is it's not required. Therefore, it's an unnecessary test or action that they're carrying out in that woman, and, and you know, is that is that creating problems in the system for the woman? Mm -hmm. So there's, there's lots of questions around that. You know, I might be more comfortable doing it, but actually, I'm not doing the right thing. Yeah. So from an improvement perspective, there's a couple of challenges I would put back to people. So I'm hearing quite a lot of yeah, we do that, we do that. So 
how how do you know you do that? The data has to prove what you're doing really reflects practice. So a couple of points. You can't fatten a cow by just weighing it. You actually have to put something into it. So devil's advocate. So I'm going to point myself out. I could only tell if that was absolutely doing if I was collecting the data by observing, by relying on other people. So what is it you're doing your system to absolutely have quality assurance that what you are saying you're doing happens in practice? Um, so that could be that you went and spoke to every single community midwife and you're reassured that they've all got their own tape. So what is your processes of assurance that likes the quality improvement to say, we're absolutely sure we do this? Um, and that's just something to think about from a QI perspective. And something Geraldine said, every woman gets their own tape. So does that happen in other areas? I know that it's a big deal, but um, just a nice few comments from Geraldine that the women have their tape and how that reduces risk infection and probably cost as well. All of our women get their own tape, yeah. um, and we know through um, how many we order in the teams that they are all using them, and we supply them wherever we are. We always have paper tapes, and they've been doing that for a very long time. It's okay. If people want to move on to fetal growth. Yeah. And some conversations around about that. So to start it off, oh, let me get back. Um, myself and Claire and Angela are involved with the Scottish Stillbirth Group, and probably folk have heard me speak about this before. And the conversations that are going on just now between um, the executives in this group is, what is the best growth chart to use for women in Scotland? So currently what we have is the handheld records that are in Badgernet or they're handheld, whatever way you have your patient records. And then some of the, the, the patient records, people are still using the chitty charts, the old chitty charts. Now, stop me if I'm wrong, Claire and Angela, because I can get mixed up sometimes. Some people are using um, GROW, and we've heard that quite a bit today. And I'm not sure the percentage of people that are using the Intergrowth 21, but my understanding is this is on Badger. So what the Scottish Stillbirth Group are doing just now is appraising all the data, all the trials, all the research out there to suggest for a once for Scotland approach, perhaps what growth charts we should be using for the women of Scotland. And what they're tying between this now is the customised and the population type charts, with a slight lean to intergrowth, because it's got a higher detection rate of SGA amongst the rest of the charts. Now, what they're saying is they're going to write to vote, so they're not saying you must use one and not the other. If you're using growth, absolutely. Um, but the thinking is perhaps if boards haven't used one, that intergrowth may be a benefit because it's free and it's in badger net. So I was keen in this group to, di um, to discuss from a quality improvement perspective. What are people using? Are they still using Chitty? Um, is they using intergrowth? What challenges are we finding with it? Is there any learning they can share across the country? Oh, in fact, no, before we go to that. Then it's there. <laughs> There's a wee chart for you to Oh God, it's got arrows again. So are you using customised growth chart, which is grow? Are you using the population, which is intergrowth, or is there another? So if we can try and pick again, I'll tick, I'll tick. I'm not using anything. Um, what are people using? I can't get in, so I'm just going to say we use the um, Perinatal Institute customised growth chart. Customised. So, so far, Jan, we've got four people in customised and one population. That's me, so just ignore me because I don't use anything. Hi, Shell, it's Jill. We are customised growth chart as well. Customised. And we, our, our, probably our main challenge has been um, putting, generating the birth weight centile at the end of all this to mm. give you your information. Um, and I'm in the process at the moment of actually. Um, making that birth weight centile a mandatory field on the um, IT system birth register. Um, but our biggest challenge, I have to say, is ask, getting the paediatricians to accept our GROW birth weight centile as opposed to the population birth weight ah. centile. And that is, to me, is the biggest challenge that I'm facing at the moment. It's a long battle. That one. So is, is there a, so when you're bored the population growth charts are used more or do they want to use them more or well 
if you get a baby born, and obviously when we put the birth weight centile in, it will tell you if it's under the 10th centile, so you'll get a missed SGA, that the paediatricians won't consider hypoglycemic pathway or anything like that unless it's under the third on the population growth chart, okay. uh, population-based growth um, growth chart. So we we have two two disciplines using two different things, and that is probably what our our biggest challenge at the moment. And I know that is the same in other places, but that, we need more information. There's been two big yeah. retrospective studies, one in the Midlands and one in Liverpool, um, and I'm trying to get hold of the detail of those studies to offer to the neonatology department to try and actually persuade them to come over to our way of thinking. But at the moment, that that's a, a big challenge. But we that's know we're using the customised growth chart because of the number of birth weight centiles we're producing, and because you can't produce one of those unless you've got your ID on your chart. Somebody's phone near the phone. Sorry. It's um, it's clear here again. Um, Hi. Hi. We discussed it as well, but you know, being clear about um, charting with you know, Chitty for estimated fetal weight for ultrasound and having um, our growth charts for our symphysis fundal height. And I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but up until intergrowth came in and when, and uh, up until gap came in and then intergrowth, we weren't actually charting symphysis fundal height and, and charts. I'm not a midwife, so please tell me if I'm completely wrong, but I just... I just understood that it was written in the antenatal record, in the handheld record, whether it was either a measurement or whether it was either <laughs> equals dates or, or greater than dates, and that we didn't actually that we didn't actually chart it until GAP came along. No, we had a population-based chart, SFH chart that we used for many years. But there's are there some places that didn't use a chart at all. You know. Anybody in the call? Yeah. No, we've always charted it. Yeah. Some, does somebody say no, they've never charted it at the same time? I thought two people came on at the same time. Yeah, we, we've always charted it. We On the population growth chart before, we had the customised growth chart. I'm sure if you went back many years, it, it mm -hmm. possibly wasn't. But, I, you know, for as long as I can remember, we've charted it. Okay. We claim um, that in Lennox, we didn't. We always in the swimmer, we just caught, um, recorded the centimetres, and presently we're just recording centimetres. We're not plotting. I know. Wow. Yeah, and I just, it just went. I look. I think when we have the discussions about charts, it's being clear about you know having it. It's a chart for the the measuring, and and then obviously once there once there's a problem or if they're high risk, it's the separate charts for for um, estimated fetal weight. Mm -hmm. And I was of the understanding that other, there were other areas like ourselves that mm -hmm. didn't actually use charts for symphysis fundal height. But no. it sounds it sounds that the, the few that are speaking in the call that most people are using a, a, yeah. a chart. Yeah, and our, our ultrasound will plot the EFW when but they the, go for scan. On no, the, the symphysis fundal height I'm talking about, though. <laughs> yeah, 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 sorry. So we so in Highland, we didn't before we started plotting on the customised growth chart. Now we plot the weight, the estimated fetal weight, and the fundal height measurement. But before that, we, like yourself, just documented it in the swimmer, and there was no um, chart to plot it in. Mm -hmm. so it's a big, been a big change in practice. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. I was just going to say, it sounds like the majority are doing that, like um, mm -hmm. are plotting now. And it's, how many years then is that going back? I'm trying to think. When we didn't do it routinely. That's a lot of years. Is it? The 80s, maybe. I think we're 20. Years. We're 30 years behind you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, 38 actually. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that. I can't think what that one is. So are most people of the opinion of? growth to chart we'll use and um, the customised charts or has anybody thought about, you know, we're going to go to the population type charts? Keen to hear people's opinions and thoughts on, as a board, I know you're only there one person speak to your board, but just thoughts on charts in general. 
we've got division? Integral with Badger um, mm -hmm. in Lanarkshire, and it's auto plotting already. However, we're still thinking about growth. Okay. So the, the, the pool is still towards growth from Gap. Anybody else? I think that seems to be the national direction, is growth. Yeah, it does. And nobody's still using chippy chaps. No. no. Sorry, Cheryl, nobody's still using what? The chippy chaps. I think Claire corrects me if I'm wrong. Do we um, is it not the ultrasound department that are using the chippy yeah, chaps? Chit chitties for scan. And they're doing their estimated fetal weight. Yes, yeah, so is people's ultrasound department still using the chippy chaps? No. No. Yep. I, I've seen them. Some of our consultants have used them, but they're not standard practice, to be fair. Yeah. Um, we 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 ha we took so a while. I suppose from a Scottish perspective, it you know whether it's the population growth chart or the customised growth chart that the midwives are using and plotting on. As soon as that growth is tailing off or that baby is picked up as being small, then we're moving from doing that to serial scanning, and we're, seri we're doing the serial scanning and plotting it on Chitty. No, we don't. Mm. But it shouldn't be. If, if you're on GROW, no. your estimated fetal weight should be plotted yeah. on GROW as well, on yeah. the same chart. Yeah. But not no, every point. unit no. in Scotland, as my no. understanding, no. is using yep. GROW. Yep. No. So, and that, that was the whole thing that the Scottish Stillbirth Group came out of. So once we... Once we have picked up that this baby is vulnerable, it would appear that from retrospectively looking at information that we're not necessarily using the best chart to continue to monitor that baby's well being. Yeah. Um. Am I correct, Claire? Yes. I agree. I don't I don't understand why though if you had a growth chart why you you would then plot from a growth chart to a chitty chart because no, you can I plot wouldn't. on the estimated fetal weight on the exact same chart. Yeah. You don't need to change your chart at all. So that's no, a bit right. strange if somebody wants were... bundle height measuring on the ch the growth chart and then going to a chitty ch chart for an estimated fetal weight. That's just strange. I think they were so, comparing the accurate, accuracy of the babies that were were small for dates. They were comparing um what charts had been used and, and, and what was the pickup rate? Mm -hmm. So they weren't. I don't think they were. They weren't going back to put, putting them a chitty from grow. Yeah. It was just which chart, which chart was used in which in which area. What was their detection rate? What, what was what was their protocol? Yeah. That was not and not everybody, not everybody in Scotland is doing grow. No, no, no that's right. But so, that was one of our first things that we had to agree when we took mm -hmm. grow on was that our sonographers agreed to plot the EFW instead, and so that was one of our first moves, really. One of your changes? Yes. 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 So when I was based in Ayrshire, that was one of the changes we made yes. as well, but from the, the work that was done retrospectively, when they looked at all the babies in Scotland, <coughs> not all of them, some of them were, are still being plotted on the Chitty chart, and the sensitivity of it is, is the worst out of Mm. Yeah, so there will be a move to um, recommend they're not used, probably. I mean, we, we don't know, but um, I think the thought consensus from Sarah Stock's work is that customised charts or population charts either are the best to use. Um, and I've just, there's a question from Geraldine. Um, surely it makes more sense to use customised rather than population is maybe less likely to get over or underestimate. Yeah. People's thoughts on that? I, I definitely agree. I think we're doing the right thing. Yeah. So do, do that, that explain... conflicts with what Integral are saying because yeah. Integral are looking at accuracy and saying, well, actually, this is you know this is looking at the normal population. Yeah. But it does sound like we've got a lot of practice to say across Scotland and I always wondered what people were doing, what charts are using, how to change practice. It sounds there's a lot of common themes. Mm -hmm. And you probably find that we've got eight minutes left. What are the absolute challenges with doing this in real time that you can improve on? Is there anything that you can think of where we have a real issue with this? I'm not hearing lots of that. Yeah. 
think if the communication between the midwives and the the doctors sometimes they break down because the doctors don't plot but our biggest basic problem is our scan capacity across mm -hmm. Wales that is our challenge yeah. getting these women scanned in an appropriate time slot if we have a slow growth or a, or a static growth you know that we must have a plan if we cannot get mm -hmm. them in for their scan before then um, so that, that's our biggest challenge at the moment I think would others agree or have different challenges? I think, yeah, we do have a problem across Wales with the scanning, um, but I think one of ours is trying to um, get the data for how, you know, an accurate measurement of our small for gestational age, really, and that's about putting the birth weight in. Um, so that's something we've got yeah. to target. And are you happy that the, that the certainly when you with ultrasound scanning, are you happy that it's it's transcribed accurately from yeah, the scan to the false negative, false positives are very low, so you know their accuracy is constantly monitored and it is very yeah. good. We get the odd one because some people obviously, if they've got a, an, an electronic ultrasound program, it, it does it automatically for yeah. them. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yours but does. We get yeah, we get we get the odd one. We've had one that was under the temp and came out at four kilograms, you know, but I can, over the last four years, I can say there was only one, there's only been one or two. So on the whole, they're accurate, but as part of our Miss SGA um, audit, we're looking at, you know, the last EFW of the his one and the weight of the baby, you know, when it's born, so, so that's, it's correlating. But that's two different things. That's the quality assurance of the, of the actual yeah, process yeah, of the so ultrasound. Yeah. Are they, but if, they're, if they weren't using an electronic ultrasound, as in where they, what the estimated of fetal weight was calculated at scan, is that then, you know, those that have an electronic system, that then is plotted as the same one, regardless of uh, whether it was an accurate measurement or not. But those that use paper records, then there may be an, an additional uh, yeah. error coming yeah. in, yeah, charting, records, so, yeah. charting it. Yeah. We don't find many errors on the plotting of the scan. Hmm. What about others? Is that quite true for others? There's a lot of false positives. False positives. Is that right? What I'm saying here, excuse me, I not, don't work clinically anymore. But there's not a lot of false positives in terms of scanning for weight. Am I saying that right? I don't know if I'm saying I that right. Up, I haven't picked up a huge amount, to be fair. Yeah, they're very good. Anyone else? Geraldine's got another comment just to call it. Um, in Geraldine's experience, tall women get more scans for query SGA and short women more for query LGA before we use customised, but we'll look up into the grow. Mm. And I think, yeah, mm. there's something about that. So I'm just mindful of time, 25 past and two, and just to wrap all this up, um, as I said at the start, the purpose of this WebEx was just really bring us together, thoughts, processes, how we're doing, what's going well, and perhaps what could go better. I'd be keen to hear other reflections, especially Claire and Angela, but from my reflection, I think sometimes fungal height is something that's done in practice by the signs of it. Um, Growth charts certainly are probably the, the tool of use, and there doesn't seem to be huge issues with um, accurate plotting. And I really want to thank everybody in the call, but Jan, your insights have been valuable today, actually, on your project and what you've been doing the last four years, and we'll definitely be in touch. But I'm going to hand over to Angela and Claire if you've got any final thoughts. I, I, just, I would Claire, I, go. I, no, I would just go back to. Um, I think that was a nice summary, Cheryl. But I would just go back to Angela's point earlier on, saying that, that that's been our, you know, that's our, our opinion in Scotland that we don't have issues with, you know, accurate plotting, that we're all, that we're all using the same chart. I mean, I, my understanding is a lot of people are moving away from GAP because they, they, or the GAP and GROW because they didn't have yeah. the capacity and, um, and those all those kind of change in favour. But it, I think it'd be a really nice exercise for us all to look at, you know, what charts we're using, what, what, uh, and, and test it and have, have sample the accuracy of the, the plotting of SFH and um, 
estimated yep. feet of weight, and then decide is you know is there a problem? And if, uh, and if there is, well, we maybe need to do some focus work on it. And if there's not, well, it's it's not it's not our priority. Thank you. Yeah. So I'd just like to add a comment that I think um, what the work in Wales has proven is that you have to do that education and training, yeah. and uh, it would be good to be assured that across Scotland that education and training was in place yeah. for all staff, not just new staff coming and not that presumption that I've been a midwife for 20 years, I can do it, or I'm a consultant, I can do it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, ve that's very, very important um, around that. And then we know that every woman is having her fundal height measured the same way. Yeah. And then the discussion goes on to which are the best charts for plotting and how does that work. And are there still units in Scotland where, when we're doing an estimated fetal of weight and ultrasound, we're using Chitty, which has been shown not to be as sensitive as we would want it to be? And equally, again, do we know our own data in Scotland? Does every mm. unit know how many small for gestational age babies it's delivering? And some units will, because they'll be using Gap and Grow. So whether they then look at that in detail or not, we don't necessarily know. So I think there's still a few questions we need to answer. Yeah. Yeah, but fantastic opening conversation to get this going. Oh yeah, really good. Any final thoughts from people on the call? No, it's just nice to hear what everybody else is doing. I know it's a great forum to come together and and just learn and listen and take yeah. ideas and I'm yeah. just I'm hoping Absolutely. people have got some thinking today on if this is a priority about oh I could try that or. We need to go and do this, and as Angela says, do we know our own data? Do we know what we're really doing? Um, so as a final thought, I'm keen to hear from people on the call. Is there any last thinking? Nope. Well, on that note, it's a minute to go. Thank you so much to everybody for joining us. Our next call will be on PPH, I'm sure. Um, so until then, we'll speak to you all then. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Thanks Janet, for sharing. Bye. Thank you.